So in this video, I am going to show you how to make a feathered boa earring drop. So the first thing I'm going to do is color my shrink plastic and I'm going to use inks on it. I'm using the Brilliance Gold and I'm on the frosted side and I'm just doing the edges with the Brilliant Gold. This is an older ink pad, so it's slightly dried out and just perfect for this kind of stamping, but a little bit too dry for using an ink pad, just not transferring enough ink, but when it gets dried out kind of like this and old, it's perfect for coloring backgrounds. Now I'm going to take the black and I just read um, ink up this older pad and I'm using this image. And when doing stamps, I always check to see how my image will look and how much to ink it up. And I'm on the frosted side, placing the frosted side down and with this I can center it with this design, tapping lightly with my fingers on it. Give me a great um, Baroque architectural feel. And I'm using one of my um, Marcia DeCostas uh, pre-cuts that I sell on my site in sets. Just did a set of just a set of wonderful designs that the Shrink It Lines carries. Some of my favorite pre-cuts. We've got 16 designs to a pack with those. So I'm going to add to this and make it a little bit more detailed. So I'm using a colored pencil to put these tiny little dots out here on the edge. And then I'm going to use the punch, the eighth inch hole punch and I'm just punching these holes here that I want for decorative detail. Now, I'm gonna make sure always when I've used inks on shrink plastic, I blot. I don't rely on the shrinking to dry up all the ink. I want it pretty um, dry. You see there was some residue there before I shrink it down. Now because it's the feather bow, feathers are everywhere. Because we're going to be using one of these things that are just like flying around on the table, the creative table. I am going to be placing the um, frosted side down on this because I, I like frosted beads but you could place it either way. Frosted dye, dye, the frosted side down will show more of the glimmer from the gold but it'll be very subtle. So let's shrink that down. We'll make sure that these are pulled apart if they touch. That can happen on a more um, finely um, cut petal, narrow petals. petals. 
Count to five, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. And we have our pretty um, bead that will match its partner. So in this step, we're going to make the feathered rosette. And I've just used regular sewing thread in black, and I tied a knot on it, and double threaded it and tied a knot. And then I used um, boa trim. And I bought this at Hobby Lobby. It came in black, and it came in white. And so I cut a section of it, strip, and I wrapped it around this um, wooden dowel. And I used painter's tape and taped it one end so it won't come uncoiled. Then I wrap it around and bring several of the ends together. Like if I'm coiling it around the stick, I will bring two of them I'll bring it around close together so that I will end up with a rosette because then I'm going to use thread and I'm going to attach them where they meet. So I'm going to take that center that's, that, that holds the feathers together. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's like a fibrous uh, center. And it, is, it allows me to stitch right through that. And my whole goal is to pull two to the put the circles together, create a circle, a rosette, and stitch through that till I feel like I've grabbed um, a couple rows. I can even go under the wooden dowel, between the wooden dowel, like right here, and bring it all the way around to pull two together. come at it at different angles to hope that I connect both of those. I think I've got myself a little rosette. So I cut my thread and then I come in here and I cut the bow which should be about right there. Okay, Because I'm trying to just current now get a rosette. A rosette being something like this. These are all the feathers. So let's see, make sure we're cutting that off and pulling our little rosette off and seeing if we're fluffy enough. Um, I have noticed sometimes if I if I lose some feathers in it, I might just take some a little bit of glue and pull like these loose feathers and you know tip it in. This one looks good enough, but just a little trick would be to do something like this with the super new glue. And you can take little loose parts um, if you've got a little gap in it and just fill it in there and let that dry if you, if you feel the need. But that one... I, I didn't let that dry because I didn't feel the need. And if I've got some spiky tips from the tail sticking out, I cut them. But I want to make sure that it's fluffy. I can always do glue filler. Um, I can always stuff these in after I have my bead made. So that's why you're seeing feathers all over here because this is messy. Now we're going to create our little earring. So I'm starting with, I'm going to make it to look like this one. So I'm starting with a little faceted bead that looks like about, uh, is that a four millimeter? And then I'm coming in here. I've got these nice little 
um, 14 and 15 size beads. If you go bigger and they're not hollow, you will um, have a weightier earring. And if you can have a weightier earring, that's okay. That's up to you. Um, I'm going to use the crackle glass. But anything in a white or clear, these little hollow ones. I sell these on my Etsy site. They're really nice. These are a little smaller. Um, and then I can find the center because basically I've just made a feather bead. Then I'm putting the shrink plastic bead on. And I'm going to put a 10 millimeter rhinestone spacer bead. I'll put this a beautiful little um, filigree on. A lot of these things I sell on my Etsy site. A black bead. It looks like I'm missing that size. I'm going to go over to my bead box and grab it. It's a nice little eight millimeter. I wear a lot of black and white, so this is um, really easy for me to always go with black and white. And there's a bead that's missing there, so I like these little beads. I don't have a whole lot of these, so anything in this little size, anything you want to do, just do, okay? And then the tiny... Oh, where is it? Bugle bead. A little bugle bead and a little pearl colored miyoki bead. And there I've got my lovely little guy. Now I'm going to put a, a wire wrap. Place my wire wrap in my ply pliers give myself a little room here since that bounces a little I can basically go right up to it press the tail back down all the way down pinch these two together and then hold my left hand and don't move this collection at all and roll it gently towards me without moving anything here then I flip it over do the same hold this collection really tightly and roll this hand towards me and I get this nice wire wrapped loop. I'm going to switch it over to my left hand. I'm going to grab the tail. I'm going to bring it in tighter here. And I'm doing a wire wrapped loop. So I'm coming around here three times. And I will cut that tail and bring my loop up to center. And now I have two darlings. And I can put an earring on them. And I made one of these for my Christmas tree. So these are great little ornaments too, and then I don't have to worry about the heaviness of it. So I used a much bigger bead down in this. There, there you go.